All right, this is Mr. Jiren. I'm going to talk to you about activity 1.1.6. This is the final activity of the first part of this unit, 1.1, the compound machine design. Um, now, this is for distance learning. If you were in the classroom, you'd be building this. So since we're virtual, this is what you're going to end up doing. Uh, you click the link, you end up at this page right here. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is just make sure that you talk to your teacher, talk to me, and make sure you're ready for this. You're going to need your engineering notebook because everything's going to go in that. Okay. Your goals, of course, are to identify the individual mechanisms in a compound machine. Now, remember, a compound machine is just a machine that has it's made up of many simple machines. Uh, and then you're going to calculate the mechanical advantage and drive ratios or gear ratios of the mechanisms. Now, I'm not sure why we switched to drive ratios. In all the notes, we've been calling them gear ratios. It's the same basic thing. Um, so to introdu introduce this a little bit, just think of something as simple as a bicycle. Uh, a bicycle seems pretty simple, and you might think it's just maybe one or two simple machines, but uh, basically, if you look at it, it's actually not. Uh, we've got pedals, we've got the brakes, handlebars, sprocket systems, we've got the, uh, if you look close, you would see there'd be gears, uh, there'd be the, um, the wheels and axles, uh, the sprockets, some chain systems, obviously, that's the big feature of a bicycle. Uh, all sorts of different, uh, different simple machines come together to form this compound machine, uh, and that's just in the drivetrain itself. So that's a, it, there's a lot of, I mean, you'll see simple machines out there, but for the most part, you're just going to see lots and lots of compound machines, combinations of these simple machines we've been learning about and working with. So for the rubric, I'm not going to talk about that right now. So here's the link to the rubric. Uh, it breaks down how you're going to be graded. To be honest, as long as you put everything in your engineering notebook, your engineering notebook follows all the guidelines that you've been learning, um, numbering everything. Make sure you cross out any big white spaces and initial it. If you make any mistakes, don't scribble it out or erase it. Just put a line through it and put your initial by it. Sign everything at the bottom, date everything, number all your pages. If you follow all those guidelines and you do everything in this uh, exercise, this activity, you're going to be fine. But if you want to check the rubric out, you can. I actually recommend you do that. It's not a bad idea. So the metacognitive strategies, again, uh, we talked about that earlier. It's something you've hopefully been keeping in mind since you're uh, on your own a lot more than you might be in the classroom. Uh, it does, if you look at this, it, it could seem overwhelming. This project, this, this activity could seem overwhelming, but just think about these types of things before you get into the project. What are you trying to learn or achieve by completing this task? Uh, maybe you're just trying to achieve an A, you know, that's fine. What are you trying to learn? What types of things uh, about machines might you try to shore up and get better at? What have you learned in this lesson? All of 1.1 that can be applied to this task. So starting way back with the talking about levers and mechanical advantage, you know, and everything since then. What do I need to do first? Now that's tricky because in uh, for us, you probably want to just talk to your teammates and start organizing it. Maybe you want to set up your engineering notebook before you even do that. Always break up complex tasks into simpler, doable, achievable, measurable tasks. Set up your engineering notebook. You can That's a measurable task. You can get that done, you're set. And what's next? Talk to your teammates. Okay, get things organized. Start thinking about how are you going to take on this project. Big project made up of lots of little tasks. Almost like a compound machine is made up of a lot of simple machines. What resources do you need to complete this task? I'm gonna give you some. You probably need a calculator, uh, maybe some other things. So the procedure is basically this. There's only a few steps to it. Uh, first, investigate a compound machine, paying attention to the individual mechanisms and machines and how they connect. Select, now here's important, select only one of the three compound machines below, only one. So we have our first one here, you're gonna click on that. You could embiggenize this and you can look a little closer, you can see all the little mechanisms. And so they are turning an axis and it is lifting a weight, lifting a mass right here. So you can see all the little, you'll, you'll have to zoom in a little bit when you watch this. Okay, second machine, compound machine. Once again, you have your input right here. It's kind of wobbly, you're lifting up a mass right over here. Okay, see all the little machines involved with this mechanism. And the third one, here's another thing where they're gonna put an input over here and the output is to lift, the final output is to lift this weight again. So once again, only choose one of those. 
choose your favorite of those. Secondly, so that's step one, nice and easy, right? Secondly, use your PLTW engineering notebook to show your work. What work? Um, well, basically here it is. Each compound machine that you want, so each of those three of which you're gonna choose one, has at least four simple machines components. It's made up of at least four machine, like simple machines. Okay, go back and look at all the previous things you learned about gears, levers, all that stuff. For each of those four mechanisms, okay, so here's where your work's gonna be. And this is what you should, you know, use your, the things that you've just, you've done this before in practice, okay? So for each of those mechanisms, um, identify what it is, okay? So you're gonna identify it. This is a gear, okay? A gear train, I guess, gear train. Uh, then you draw a diagram of that, whatever it is, gear train, lever, whatever, okay? So identify what it is, label it what it is, diagram it what it is, and then label each individual mechanism in the compound machine. So you're gonna have to draw, a sketch the compound machine and have all these little arrows pointing at all the individual mechanisms in that machine, identifying them properly, okay? Draw them well. You don't have to be artistic, just be accurate and precise as best you can so it's recognizable. To scale, it's always good to include proper documentation, including effort and resistance force directions. So draw arrows showing what the directions are for those effort and resistance forces. The distance, okay, so like let's say you have a lever, what's the DE, what's the DR, if you have a gear, what's the diameter, that kind of stuff, identify all that, okay, document those. And the key mechanism features, so if it, if it is a lever, where is the fulcrum, okay, <laughs> that kind of stuff. If it's a wheel and axle, where is the wheel and the axle, okay, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you label everything very well. Remember, this is an important grade, so you want to take your time on this. And finally, so that's all this identifying and diagramming and everything. Then you want to doc document your calculations of the mechanical advantage of each of those four, either mechanical advantage or driver gear ratios for each of those four mechanisms, okay? So you're gonna pick one of those machines from up above here. And in those, there's at least four mechanisms, four simple machines you need to document everything, including mechanical advantage or gear ratios, drive ratios, okay? Go ahead and estimate distance and diameter as needed. Now, to help you out, uh, I know I've provided you with a document that gives you some information, but there's also some right here in this little uh, drop-down menu. Um, use any reasonable means to estimate the, the measurement that you need to calculate mechanical advantage, okay? Put a ruler up to the screen, whatever you need, whatever works for you just keep consistent because remember that it's the ratio that's important the the effort distance and the resistance of the and the resistance distance so whatever method you use to measure one use that same method and units to measure the other okay um one thing to note is that the little spacings the holes of the vex components are very standard at half an inch apart so if you look at like all these little holes here the you're going to see every little hole is half an inch apart 0.5 inches so that could help you estimate the length of things okay not only that the pulleys and all the little things that you see are very standardized uh, this pulley right here is you got 10 millimeters 40 okay so you'll see these things in the machines here we have teeth for the gears okay there's also 84 teeth gear that you may recognize so if, if one of these is not it that you're seeing in the machine, then it's probably, and it looks like it might be an 82 gear, uh, tooth gear, then it's probably 82, 84 tooth gear, okay? So that's that's a little pull down thing, so that's, that could be helpful for you for estimating. And use the general formula, or mm, I should say structure, for calculating these things, just like the, write down the formula for each thing, substitute and solve, final answer, you should have that at least four times, I'd just say four times, one for each of the simple machines in the compound machine that you chose. Step two is a big one, <laughs> all right? There's a, there's a lot, take your time on it. There's only a couple steps, five I think, counting the final, uh, the final um, questions. So th step three, much smaller. Once you have all the mm, individual parts, uh, the, the gear ratios and or the uh, mechanical advantages, Calculate the total, 
the total system mechanical advantage for the compound machine, okay? Uh, total gear ratio, that kind of thing. Remember, they don't combine, so you're gonna have to, you, you might have two things. So calculate the total system mechanical advantage for the compound machine. Fourth step. Uh, this one is a little interesting. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer here. This one, you have to actually evaluate the machine, okay? Here's a simple rubric for you to follow. You have to evaluate the machine according to this rubric and justify your, explain yourself, okay? Using evidence from your observation. So you're gonna look at the compound machine that you chose and you're gonna talk, you're gonna grade its mechanical efficiency using this rubric. Do you think it were, Do you think that machine that somebody else built gets four out of four points, 100% based on this description? Fine, cool, explain why. Maybe it only gets three points, explain. Two points, one point. Okay, use this rubric to grade or evaluate the mechanical efficiency of that machine that you chose. Then do the same thing for the quality and functionality. Does it get four points? Well, here's what it needs to get four points. Does it get four points? You tell me. Okay, in your engineering notebook, justify everything, be as thorough as possible. Okay, that's step four. And finally, that's it. Conclusion questions. Make sure you answer in complete sentences. Don't leave things out of context. So write down the question, uh, answer thoroughly, answer well, so that you know in five weeks you could go back and you would understand what the question is you're trying to answer. And in five years, you could do the same. And in 50 years, you could do the same. Okay, so leave everything in context. Don't just have answers dangling out of nowhere. So that is it. That's how you do that. When you're all done, take pictures of your work and submit it to the class assignment. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. All right, good luck and stay, stay on this. Bye.